pray. Father, we thank you for this day that you've given us, Lord, so packed with blessings, with opportunities, with so much of potential, Lord, because you are in it. And Father, we thank you that uh, you're the one who says that, who said that you are the one who daily loads us with benefits, Lord, loads our day with benefits, Lord. And uh, Father, we thank you that uh, you've done that for each one of us. I pray that, that we will be a blessing to at least one person today, Lord, throughout this day, Master. Um, I pray that you will lead us to the right people so that we can be a blessing, bring a word of encouragement, um, share the gospel, Lord, share your word. And uh, yes, Master, and be a source of encouragement um, and be a source of hope, Lord, uh, in people's lives. Yes, Father God, I pray that uh, you will use us to... Um, bring the gospel, share the gospel with at least one person today, um, either in person or, Lord, through the phone or, Lord, yeah, through an email. I pray, Lord, that you'll use us in that manner and uh, let at least uh, one person's life be touched today by the power of the gospel. Yes, Lord, use us, Lord. We thank you. We commit this class. We commit all the students who are going to be making the presentations into your mighty hands. I pray that, uh, yes, Lord, that you would have your way. Let your kingdom come, that you will be done in all our lives. In Jesus' precious name, we pray. Amen. Amen. Okay. Yeah, Prince, uh, go ahead. Oh, oh, just one second. Just give me a um, minute. I'll just um, start the timer. You're ready, Prince? Yes, sir. Yeah, okay. Yeah, please start. Okay, good morning, everyone. So today I'm saying about uh, type of the Santal. This is my uh, research. So we'll look at the background of the Santal. The Santal is the uh, Santal is one of the populous tribes in the eastern part of India. Uh, they mainly found in the uh, state of uh, Jharkhand, Bihar, Odisha, and West Bengal, and also Assam. Uh, they also found in Bangladesh and Nepal, also in Bhutan. So, uh, according to the web report, uh, the total population is uh, 7.4 million. Uh, we will see in the diagram. Most of the Santa believe in Hinduism. I mean, uh, Hinduism is 63% and Sarna Dharam is 31% and Christianity only 5% and other one. Now we'll see the story. So they were come from Indo China and separate Southeast Asia. Uh, then they settled down in the uh, Odisha. But there is, a, I did not find any timeline when they came and settled down. But in the British period of time, Santal entered in historical record in 1795. Uh, they did not have their own script. Uh, when they when the East India Company came in India, they pay attention uh, pay attention to the Santal people. Uh, the company uh, also grabbed the land and the forest. Uh, they uh, then they uh, levered on their land. So after that, uh, money lender become the uh, owner of the land. So when all these things are happening, for, uh, after that for for the corrupt uh, collector in uh, for the corrupt collector in 1855, uh, Santal revolt in the Santal rebellion, better known as the Santal, and uh, they uh, go against the uh, East India Company or uh, money lender. So uh, 3,000 Santals led by the Sidhu Murmu and Kanu Murmu, uh, they are. Uh, uh, after uh, there are also many Santal leaders who have to sacrifice their life for the Santal. Uh, the Santal are divided into 12 clans. The clans means a title. The clans are, are ranked according to the old division, old functional division, like uh, Kisku were king and Murmu were priest, etc. So this is uh, similar to the 12 tribe in the Bible, what I thought. Uh, then we come to the culture about their culture. 
so marriage is one of the uh, culture that uh, marriage may be several type uh, type among the santal uh, most uh, the most celebrated kind of marriage is the half pram kovapla it means uh, the four father marriage but there are something they um, they cannot get married with the same clan uh, they thought the same clan means brother and sister so they cannot get married and other substitute are marriage is uh, elopement uh, they they in this uh, in this form of marriage the uh, boy and girl who wish to marry they dedicate uh, they decide to go somewhere and uh, stay few days till their family get report and also festival is the one of the culture uh, this is a, uh, this uh, festival is a, the biggest festival among the santal this happening five days and also the art and music and art and music is the talent uh, inherent talents uh, uh, and craft which is reflected in the beautiful wall painting and how uh, i'm sorry prince the uh, doors are prince sorry to interrupt uh, uh, prince with the uh, uh, with the prince sorry to uh, like the other can you hear me and music, uh, can you hear me now integral part of santal they uh, did not have a... um Hello, Prince. Yes. Can you hear me? Yes, I am. I am hearing. Um, sorry to interrupt. I think we there was a incoming call, no? So we couldn't hear you. Uh, uh, what you said during that time, we couldn't hear. So can you just repeat that? Yes, sir. Okay. I think uh, that was uh, art and music, that culture. Oh Now, yeah I, okay about the marriage I, I think we till then it was clear and after that yeah now it's uh, here we can hear you oh, yeah, go ahead okay please yeah okay i will share after the marriage so after the marriage uh, the festival uh, the sorai is the festival of the biggest festival among the santal uh, this festival is happening uh, uh, between december and january uh, they offered their their uh, offered their uh or uh, something whatever they collect uh, all year they are part of the goat spirit of the family and after that uh, art is one of the culture also um, santal have the inherent talents in art and craft which is reflected in their the beautiful uh, wall painting and also uh, they decorated the house uh, drawing a uh, colorful with the colorful drawing and, uh, like the other tribe then uh, tribes uh, dance and music are also integral part of their santal life so, so now we come to the about the script mm, they did not have the script uh, missionary there is the name uh, hans peter borsen and lars olsen second first they learned about their language when they came to, uh, in india and they learned about their culture and religion after um, norwegian missionary pio boding pio boding uh, he came in 1890 uh, he arrived in benagadia mission which is in charkan and he uh, he is the one who wrote the roman script for the santal uh, boding also created uh, first alphabet and wrote the first grammar for the santal speaking people on the other side santal says the santal alphabet is all cheki uh, which is uh, in the right side we are saying uh, looking at then uh, but some of the santal say that uh, alphabet uh, all cheki is the santal's alphabet uh, the all cheki is invented by in, invented by uh, pandit raghunath murmu in 
1925. But uh, currently there is a, a debate among the Santals community about the Roman script or uh, all Chiki. So how the Christianity came to the Santal? We will look at. Um, I, I did not get any data from. Uh, I did not get any data that who was the first uh, Christian among the Santal, but. Uh, we look at before Hans Peter Borsen and Lars uh, Okain suffered. They first started the mission work among the Santal. After uh, after the P.O. boarding started the missionary uh, missionary among the uh, ministry among the Santal, and he uh, he completed the translation of the Bible into the Santali language in 1914. So uh, the turning away from the Christianity. The after the uh, Christianity came to the among the Santal, that after after some time, uh, uh, even also now, uh, they are uh, they are turning away from the Christianity because of the they not received from the heart. Most of the Santal people are converted for getting something. They are not received from the heart, and. Second point is uh, work leadership. The missionary, when the mission, uh, when the missionary uh, left the uh, left the country, uh, when the uh, took uh, local pastor charge uh, of the of the ministry, uh, they not able to manage the congregation. Uh, third point is uh, culture attitude. They also look back the uh, old culture practices. They are not ready for the love the new things. And uh, uh, the fourth one is. A fear of the condemnation. Uh, I've done here that uh, unbelievers santals call believers santals for general, foreigners. They they receive a foreigner uh, religion and they condemn them. And the last one is uh, forced by someone. So in 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 our time, the santal community among the santal community, uh, if the somebody accept the Christ, they post uh, they will be posted by santal people like. Uh, they will their comment is like uh, you should not accept Christ and you are condemning our community. I said like that. Here we see uh, share some, some thought about the gospel among the Santal. So uh, we need to make uh, make the friends. So many Santas are moving towards the modern days. Uh, they contribute uh, on their studies. Uh, they're studying in the college school uh, it's good to make them friend and uh, they feel really you can care about them and let uh, uh, your friendship uh, serve as the foundation of your witness to them and second is our test uh, our testimony so now you can look at uh, our testimony is a very important part for living uh, at good testimony is really good uh, as, a, as a christian and uh, third one is uh, asking question. Everyone likes to uh, ask their opinion. Uh, they can. Uh, uh, this is can be good way to start a conversation with them and uh, able to discuss uh, discuss about the spiritual matter and prayer and healing. And nowadays, uh, most of the santal believing in healing ministry. Uh, they participating in many retreat or healing ministry. It's good to pray for them and they can. Uh, they can join uh, with Christ. And, uh, connected with the culture, uh, when uh, we are connected with the culture and attending their festival or any program, uh, they they will listen us and uh, they will feel really uh, we are care about them. So the medical uh, last one is medical mission. So medical mission is a great way to opening a long lasting relationship with the Santal community. If you look at the Santal uh, very uh, very poor people, but uh, they need uh, medical help for their family. So we can help them. And, uh, we can pray for uh, prayer is the uh, uh, optional. The, if they interest, we can pray for them. Okay. Thank you. This is my share. Right. Uh, thank you, Prince. I just have a few questions for you. Like, um, so now, um, uh, did you 
were you able to meet any of the santal believers um and get first hand information about how they came to know christ like today you know in these days how do, how do they come to know christ and their testimony were you able to do that just uh, i uh, i have a meet uh, in person meeting that i i asked them so how about their view on the scar among the santal uh, Uh, I really what I mean, yeah what i mean is like uh, in person in the sense uh, either face to face meeting them or you know on phone or you know uh, so just connecting just to see um, so that is what i meant you know either face to face or you know over the phone uh, were you able to establish contact with the you know somebody from this community and get their first hand information how they came to know christ i uh, i met in person meeting but i didn't uh, ask the this kind of questions like the mm-hmm. how they come in christianity okay okay so so when you met them what kind of uh, information were you collecting yeah I just uh, i asked them so um, i i asked uh, the who was the like uh, who was the first christian among the santal and how christian uh, how in uh, missionary works uh, among us in the old day this kind of question mm-hmm. i asked them mm-hmm. okay and uh, yeah can you also tell us like uh, at present like mm-hmm. um, what what kind of uh, evangelistic work is happening among the santal community like who is doing it uh, like um, which church which ministry is 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 doing it and uh, and the effectiveness what are the methods that are that they use and and the effectiveness of it yeah in 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 this present days uh, most uh, Uh, effective work is like uh, prayer and healing ministry so some of the uh, god's people uh, those who receive the uh, gift uh, gift of the spirit and they are doing good in their job uh, they uh, arrange so many uh, many prayer meeting or any ret- uh, many retreat uh, they they come there and uh, they uh, hear about the christ Mm-hmm. so any particular ministry or church which is doing a good work right now among the santal community that you can uh, think mm-hmm. of that you can name there's no particular but uh, just uh, if someone receive and um, there's many many uh, places there if they decided to will bring this person Uh, for the mm-hmm. uh, healing ministry and they doing like uh, we uh, we did uh, uh, in 2019 and also in this time uh, in the, in this year uh, there there is a church uh, called uh, hasnagar hasnagar believers i don't know the church name but they organize this kind of um, healing ministry mm. okay so um so healing ministry you're saying is the is is something that is effective even today yeah. Yeah. okay mm. so now um are there uh, many santal churches led by santal pastors um yeah there is a led by the santal uh, pastor some of the pastor okay. that uh, uh, i know personally know them uh, Mm-hmm. Uh, Robin Soren is one of them, and Sunil Soren, Madan Raske, they are working among the Santal. Okay, okay, right. Um, yeah, just one more question I had. Uh, um, now, um, about who were the first believers? Um, you said you don't have much information no on that yes yeah, 
I didn't mm. get any yet permission. Okay, okay, right. Okay. Um, and you also mentioned uh, like uh, why uh, some of them are turning away, right? Mm. Now, um, let's say, you know, are there any statistics uh, which which show us that, uh, or any research which show us that, okay, um, this is how many, you know, how you have so many people coming to the Lord, and mm -hmm. out of that, you know, these are the people who are, you know, going back to the Santal religion. Um, you also mentioned, you know, the reasons for which uh, they turn away, um, like mm -hmm. uh, not received from heart or cultural attitude. They think it's mm -hmm. a foreign religion, etc. But then, so when you mentioned why they are turning away, is it after they come to know Christ and then they backslide and they go back? Or in the beginning itself, they reject Christ? When you no, after say they turning come, away. Okay. After they come to the Christ, they also, mm. a few years later, they are turning back. Mm. So, can you... Is there any research to show, okay, so much of percentage in the sense one in ten people or five in ten people, you know, are going back uh, to back to the Santal, you know, the, whatever the religion is, which is like uh, animistic and, and Hinduism. So is there any research like that? Were you able to find out anything? Uh, I, I, didn't, I didn't find like that. Okay, okay. Um, and so, um, like based on these things, um, so what do you think uh, is the church doing to, to counter this? You know, you said, okay, these are the reasons for which they are turning away. So is the church or are the ministries doing anything, uh, actively, proactively to, to stop that? You know, so like some of these reasons that you've mentioned are they yeah. think it's a foreign religion. So is the church doing anything to to you know tell them that it's not? Uh, and some it's a, a cult old cultural you know attitude. Okay, so is the church doing mm -hmm. anything to tell them about that? Um, and also about the leadership, right? So so is the yeah. church or the ministry doing anything to strengthen the leadership? Um, yeah. So in your research, were you able to find out what is it or yeah, yeah, were you able to find out? I think uh, SF Church, uh, we need to go to them and uh, uh, build them and continuously. And uh, uh, what uh, we can share the gospel, and also after that, we can continuously minister to them and uh, let them know the Bible, what the Bible says, according to the faith. Mm -hmm. So, are you saying that that is not happening right now? Okay, yeah, this is happening, but some of the church are only doing, but not much. Mm -hmm. Okay, fine. Yeah. Okay, um, Prince, thank you, thank you so much. Thank you. Right. Okay. okay, so Prince is done. We have Kiran and Thomas. Okay, so Kiran, uh, would you like to share? Yes. Um, you have a, do you have a presentation? Okay. So can you able to see? Yeah, we can see. Yeah, uh, just one second. Yeah, you're ready to start. Yeah. Um, you're ready to start. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Please go ahead. Start. Okay. Hello. Praise the Lord, everyone. Uh, today, I, I wanted to share tribes of Rajput. The Rajput or a okay introduction. The uh, the God revealed reveal the the God gave us that the burden that we we 
have to say the gospel each and every people and caste and place so this is uh, an ministry we, we have to do also ministry in between the every caste and people so i just choose the rajput put uh, rajput we'll see the presentation and uh, what we will discuss today the past and the different phases in important term and present some factors and some challenges and conclusion we'll see once a uh, geographical background regarding rajput the rajput originated from western eastern and north india and the one part they have taken the pakistan uttar pradesh and uh, maharashtra and basically rajasthan the 16th century to 6th if we will see over there they got a freedom from the british and over there they have received the they have received the freedom regarding any can they can do and they can move and they can start their own self so earliest the uh, early, earliest day the one of the rajput sivdes or chittor 134 ad and and one of the great, greatest the king established their self ruler among the mewars 734 ad ruling from there the chittorgarh and the paparatwar ruled 734 and between 756 18 the chittor over there the every rajputanas and they used to ro royal and they they have they have the power to rule and reign the every places and all and they then after they they established their self to them and they started to uh, uh they started to establish their their way and their things all, all over the india basically north in the rajasthan place and after they died when they died and then uh, the contemporary rajput over there they started to living and staying and then they they got a freedom from uh, all the british the the power and complemented and this basically wanted to share one thing the rajputana they have they started their self three part first one is surya vansi chandra vansi and agni vansi they used to stay and rule and follow their uh, their all the rules and all the rituals starting and then after after that they slowly they 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 stop and they started to receive contemporary method and they 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 left before behind all the uh, things and they started to contemporary turn we'll see as as uh, the god has uh, god and if we will see the act of books oh the over there how god how god the pour out his spirit between the all the people and how they started to speaking tongue and receiving to god by his power and by his demonstrations like that the raj uh, one of the uh, strongest and their faith and everything uh, that we believe and we we believe that the god will change and god will move uh, mightily between the rajput all peoples and we will see once a uh, origin part the rajput used rajput uh, the 
one of the caste is the Chhatriya family, and they they started at first to receiving the contemporary and uh, and the believing the different caste and respecting different caste, and they the first the 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 first the caste uh, in between. Uh, the Rajputana, Brahmana, and the uh, Chhatriya. The family used to stay between the all the tribes, and they receiving their uh, culture, their their rituals, and respecting them. Lived their own, and the first uh, first uh, the Rajput they received the. Uh, Chhatriya cause they receive the first uh, the the Christ or Christ and and uh, the different and uh, wherever the Chhatriya caste is surrounded all over the India the Rajasthan and the UP and, and the other places they at first received Christ over there and 16th century they started to work daily basis also they got a freedom from everything and they 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 started their own living standard and their own the decision. The languages and the religions, they used to speak the Hindustani language, the proper standard language in Hindi language and the Rajasthani basically. And the, all over the India, the, uh, the Rajput is uh, the percentage is 88% is a Hindu and 50 per, uh, 12 percent people or other religions there are many religions who believe in Christ but uh, uh, now we are not able to tell the how many percent the believer in, in the Christ and total population is 8363500 and ministry between the Rajput total population is Christians is over there zero as we did as as we discussed that we don't know how much but uh, if uh, after searching an image it is a 0.14 percentage is all over the india is rajput is there and who believe the christ and they they live their strong faith and they they receive the christ and the many uh, many uh, many churches is built in, in rajasthan Basically, CNI, Pentecostal, Catherine, and others. Also, they all working, and they all uh, received a good head, and they sharing the gospel and churches and everything they received, and nicely is going on. And many, uh, zero point fourteen percent, uh, the the Rajput they receive Christ, and still they are a strong faith in in Christ. Some challenges, if we see the challenges, uh, challenges, oh, those Ras, those Rasput, they, they receive Christ, their, their, their personal savior, they, they used to face some challenges like persecution and oppositions, the, the behind the left, the Rajput, those don't receive the Christ, their life. They used to discuss and they used to torture and they used to uh, take some uh, difficult uh, opposition in front of them and they, they, they took a very difficult challenges in front of the believers Rajput and and they began uh, in some Rajput, they began to their heart began to strong hearted and blind eyes. They, they even they return and some of uh, some of Rajput they return on their their own faith and all. And the political parties also established over there the strong links and they used to uh, take some strict decision between them that they cannot be able to. Uh, at the church and attending the church and uh, worshiping and house fellowship and that these all things and religions and the other community people they also started to uh, taking action the, the Rajput Christians there. We'll see.
the conclusion if we see the we all have to stand equal before god all have to be at the image of god himself however that making one inferior to the other god calls on the fulfill rules and responsibility he designed for them so all persons should be given liberty respect and recognition to use the god given talent and gave to fulfill the ministry calling so god gave us responsibility even they are very strong their faith and faith all things so we we can pray and we can move uh, by his uh, strength and by his holy spirit thank you sir thank you everybody. right kiran thank you so um i just wanted to ask you a few questions um so um how exactly did you go about uh, your research for this information so what information were you looking for and what exactly did you do in your research please okay so i spoke uh, many pastors before the one of project over there i i received the uh, received call and i talk between the converses and the pastors and senior pastors and in in rat from rajasthan and they share about all things and all even my uncles they i heard from them and they shared it so so i thought and the the rajputana tribes i i can take uh uh-huh. mm so so can you just share um what did you find out about um, you know you mentioned that there are cni there's pentecostal churches and so on so can you just share like what what efforts are the churches or the believers uh, putting in in order to share christ um with the rajputs and how effective is it okay so i spoke a uh, previous times and uh, many uh, some contract i, I received and i searched i collected some data and one of the one uh, for three pastors as i i touched i their the thought touched me very much pastor dilip meena from pratapgarh in rajasthan they they are doing over there uh, their church name is uh, satsang so many pastors were there and they started over there to doing the ministry and all things in, in their religions and they said it a little difficult but not impossible slowly slowly they 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 nurtured and they respected their their caste and they shared the gospel also and then came the christ and one more pastors pastor v vijay prakash from ajmer and pastor rajesh um, rathor from ajmer and pastor manish singh baswara uh, the baswara pastors is very very um, very is a normal and they their caste singh caste and all baswara over there they build and establish the yesu darbar the church name is 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 increase in one of uh, the big organization over there established and uh, nicely going on and they shared even challenges and the difficulties how they face but still they stand over there and uh, doing ministry so it encourage me to nothing impossible so yes sir yeah kiran so i just want to know what specifically you know like what are the efforts what evangelistic efforts what methods um are being effective in reaching this community so what exactly are the churches doing um you know strategically like in terms of um in terms of methods you know like are they 
you know, because these are obviously uh, of a high caste um, the community. So they are looking at, you know, any other religion uh, as, uh, you know, especially Christianity as something which is coming from a very lower, inferior caste. So, so how do, uh, so what uh, efforts are the churches putting in in order to reach out, you know, specifically, what methods were you able to find out? Okay, they are reaching out in this manner, right? They are doing this, um, and and this is how they are sharing the gospel. So, any any particular effective method were you able to find out in your research? Yes, uh, I spoke one of pastor hmm. uh, from Baswara. The pastor said, like, there is. Uh, not much uh, education field so they used to visit at first ed edu education school and colleges and they they did some program evangelical and they shared over there the, some text and youth is starting to coming there uh, the Yesu Darba, the church and after youth their parents when their parents uh, heard about Yes, so there about the church and the, some of the parents they started uh, with their children they uh, they attending the yes there about the church so uh, uh, I, it, nice to hear to that so and another pastor they did not say i asked but they did not say how they started and how they doing you know, between them so mm. Okay, one last question. Like, uh, how um, how different is their church service, their worship, uh, from any other, you know, place? Is it different? How different is it? Yes, uh, it's little different. I uh, um, regarding our church and our. Uh, here place and over there they they used to uh, the the worship the god and how they worship the god uh, how they used to uh, worship in puja part and all like that similar they used to do like that also in yesu darbar they used to song sing a song is very different they even they they uh, they wrote a song and their song they used to play their uh, worship time and and the sermons also they are little different because they don't know how to uh, how to prepare and how just they used to take and the story type they nicely they receive the story by story they used to say the cause the all the bibles the things that's a little different mm -hmm. Okay, right. Okay, Kiran, thank you. Thank you so much. Um, so what we'll do is, uh, see, now it's uh, almost 9.47. So um, do we have the next hour? I, I remember last week you did not have, but this hour, this week, do no, you have? Sorry, don't. You don't have, right? Okay, okay. Fine. Then, so then, Thomas, can you continue, please? Uh, can you share? And then after you're done, we'll finish. Yeah. You can check out the uh, presentation you can try it out once you're ready you let me know can i do after a break because three minutes that i can continue for uh, can we, yeah, we continue can just, the class yeah we'll continue we'll continue and then we okay. can once and for close all we it. can yeah close, okay yeah. okay but no problem
first can i share? is it uh, my screen is here um no i am actually seeing your uh, the the actual presentation is not there oh one your, moment yeah presentation is not there yeah now it's there but i think it's the presenter view um you'll have to do a yeah slide show yeah okay uh if you're ready we can start um it was it was fine uh now thomas oh, okay but no. I, i just unmute the no it now it's gone back it's uh... i'll i'll come back i'll come back okay fine yeah this is okay okay good morning everyone uh, they like to present a revival in karnataka the research the growth of christianity and more of the holy spirit in karnataka so um, when i chose this topic uh, i never knew this is uh, so deeper i'm just uh, touching the few a uh, few points so through this we can understand what is happening in karnataka because in each and every district if i go church by church or uh, missionary and evangelic things and all it will be too deeper so i am taking only few examples in karnataka so that will help to understand uh, where where we are now uh, means the way the christianity stands so a short note on karnataka first i'll uh, show the short note of karnataka karnataka has 30 districts karnataka rich in culture and tradition there are 50 languages only uh, commonly known as uh, the, the common people know only the official language kannada but there are the tribal languages are there like uh, kodava and tribal language like uh, koraga badaga yarava irula soliga gauli and uh, jenukuruba and bettakuruba siddhi languages spoken by the spiddi tribe of uttara karnataka so hakki pikki language hakki pikki is a uh, nomadic people they used to travel place to place like that they also have their own language and in mangalore they have own language called tulu like that so many languages are there the karnataka rich in language but uh, 70% of uh, 70 to 90% of people kannada people only uh, and uh, if you see the caste system there are 16 caste and Un- uh, under sc there are 101 sub castes are there Okkaligas and Lingayats are the major and powerful caste. But 70% of Karnataka populations are SC, means the low caste people are there in Karnataka. So Hindu is the major, major in this land. Uttara Karnataka and Udupi people worship Bhuta, means devil. They offer sacrifices and receive blessings. And Hindu is the major religion. More than uh, 80 to 90% people are Hindus. and in some part of karnataka people worship demons they call bhuta they means uh, it is not like black magic or uh, some like satan worship and all they consider the demons or god it's called bhuta and uh, in mangalore and udupi side and all you can see the bhuta kunita uh, there is kind of cultural trend, cultural uh, dance performance and all there so they will worship the they will so this picture shows how much the people need the gospel how much people uh, to receive the love of christ that is why i just take on the short note on karnataka so we can see how this christianity uh, spread in early uh, early days uh, in early history of the spread of the christianity in karnataka early from south kanara from goa and kerala catholics spread the christianity so in a beginning stage in the early history the catholics from goa and kerala they came to udupi and mangalore and uh, coastal part of that area and uh, spread the christianity then the protestant missionaries came to mangalore basel mission basel mission is the one of the biggest uh, mission uh, we can see only uh, mangalore and that kind of coastal area side now but uh, in early stage uh, basel missions contributions are very big they spread the christianity across the coastal lands and uh, 
to the people there. And uh, we can see the Methodist movement in North Karnataka, especially in Basel Mission. Uh, I want to touch this. Um, maybe it's not clear in the uh, PPT. Uh, I, I find one family in Mangalore. They're uh, now they're part of the tradition family. Uh, their name is Grace and Chen. So through the personal conversation, I collected some, some of the information. The missionary came and visited the higher caste people like Brahmins. And uh, it's very hard to preach the gospel to the Brahmins, but their forefathers, through the powerful word of God, again, again, they come to preach and demonstrate the love of God through the healings and deliverance. These people uh, come to know Jesus Christ, the true living God, and slowly, one by one, they accepted the Christ. So in the initial stage, the Brahmins are the one who accepted the Christ first in a Mangalore site. So the, their generations continually worshipping God. They're part of uh, Basel Mission and uh, CSI Church and Methodist Church. They spread like that. So uh, we can see in the London missionaries, uh, missionaries work in South Karnataka. Uh, I taken one missionary example like uh, G GW Sade. They, uh, he's worked in uh, Mysore, Tumkur, Ma Mandya. Uh, Hassan in this kind of south, southern part of the Karnataka. And Methodist movements are very powerful in North Karnataka, like Raichur. I personally visited Raichur uh, in some years back. And we can see uh, biggest buildings in uh, Belagavi and uh, Belga Belagavi, Raichur, Chitradurga, and this kind of areas. And all Methodist movements are very powerful. In early days, when missionaries carried the power of God, uh, they they say so, they saw some miracles and healings. Uh, when I spoke to the missionary, uh, sorry, a pastor, Methodist pastor in uh, Raichur, he said in early days, uh, people, uh, the missionaries, carried the love of God. At the same time, the healings will take place when they go to villages and meet the people. They used to pray and just come. Not like today, uh, the Pentecost and the Holy Spirit much importance, but they had a little faith. When we pray, Jesus will heal like that. So like that, many churches are started in Methodist movement. Then we can see the Pentecostal movement across the Assemblies of God and other churches and all across Karnataka. Then we can see now the independent movement. Uh, there are uh, many, uh, many churches are there uh, across Karnataka, India. So some of the things uh, I like to share about GW Sade. Uh, the mission in South Karnataka, especially this missionary. When I visited Mandya uh, in 2018, so there is a church in Mandya. Through the church, the entire street is affected. In so when he this Sade came to Mandya with the word of God, uh, there is a one family in Mandya. Through them only, I a, a first information I collected from them. So their forefathers, they sold everything, their property, assets, everything in their village and came to, came and settled in Mandya, the capital uh, city. Because the Saudis preaching were so powerful, they like to hear the word of God. His uh, words and his uh, preachings are so powerful. He used to share the love of God. So he's the missionary from London. He traveled to Tumkur, Mysore and uh, Mandya. Social works are remarkable. In in his orphanage relief camp, more than twenty five thousand people were fed. He worked under a, under Maharaja. In the famine, he fed the people. He contributed to the government. Uh, there is a famine in his time, where where the Mysore is the capital of Karnataka at the time. The government also cannot uh, is helpless to provide the food and the needy to the people. That time, G. W. Sade he he raised the fund in London and uh, other countries and uh, contributed to the government. And he fed the people. He loved the people. He showed the love of God. To see that action, many people come to know the love of God and, and accepted Christ as their personal savior. Not only that, uh, he's, uh, he's working under Maharaja in a respectable position. So under the, his influence, he constructed uh, many hospitals in Mysore. Uh, still, there is a road and there is a streets in his uh, name, G.W. Sade. There is a hard Holdsworth. 
Mission Hospital in Mysore. More than 100 years, this hospital is running successfully. There are thousands of patients getting treated. This uh, works maybe uh, in uh, in the topic of revival. Uh, there is, we cannot see much uh, healings and deliverance and all. But I believe when they do the social work, they're showing the love of Christ. That is the work of the Holy Spirit. Through the work, many people is attracted and uh, and receive the Christ. And not only his work, he used to preach, he used to travel to the villages in uh, Tumkur, Mysore and Mandya and Hassan and other parts and he used to preach the gospel along his work. So through his through his social work and through his preaching, many people were attracted and come to come to the saving knowledge of Christ. And uh, city of Bangalore, I taken only or uh, two three churches because uh, I have seen in Lingarajpuram and other parts of uh, uh, Lingarajpuram near the Lingarajpuram area, there are three thousand churches in each and every uh, street. There is a small 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 churches are there. Three, uh, there are three thousand churches. And uh, if I uh, take uh, taken only Bangalore itself, it's very uh, deeper because so many independent churches are there. So, uh, so much of work is going on. So only I had taken um, two churches. One is uh, Bethel AG and this is F, uh, F, FG AG, Full Gospel Church. So Bethel AG is started by Pastor M. A. Varghese. He's an army person. Uh, so this is the Assemblies of uh, God's Trust. So before the M.A. Varghese, uh, there were some people were praying and doing something in the Ganga, Ganga Nagar, the prayer fellowship. Something means prayer fellowship. But that did not uh, much effective. But when uh, Pastor M. A. took this uh, charge, he 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 made a prayer movement, and uh, they used to pray and sit together with a few people like that. The church started. In in M. A. Varghese's ministry, the deliverance ministry ministry were powerful. People were set free from the demonic forces and evil dark things and all, and many sickness were healed. And when they started with a few people, but now they have 25,000 attendees in Malayalam and English church, especially the English English congregation, Pastor, uh, P, uh, Pastor Johnson Varghese has made such an impact on the Bangalore city uh, that's, that's become an international worship center. The, so many people will gather there across the uh, city. Um, Different languages people, they used to attend the church. Nearly more than 25,000 uh, people in, in their website are taken. Uh, at least uh, maybe 2,000 to 3,000 people every week for my calculation. But this information taken in the website. So they have cell group. Even in our area also, uh, in our area means HSR and uh, Hospalia. In this kind of areas, churches uh, no churches are there. But I have seen... Uh, uh, the Malayalam church cell groups are there, though they have this. Uh, so when I inquired, the, I inquired with the people, I've taken the information from there. They have the cell group, uh, cell groups across the city. Uh, uh, so they they do the Bible study on weekdays, Wednesdays, and Tuesdays. And every Sunday, the cell group people will attend the main churches like that. They're planning. So uh, across the city, they they have the cell groups and they will collect. They will. They will teach the word and take the people to their main churches on Sundays. Not only that, they have raised many servants of God, pastors and leaders and sent as a missionaries in different parts of not only in Karnataka, but across India. And we can see FGAG. Pastor Baltang has started with uh, three people. Uh, their website also shows more than 25,000 attendees every week. Healing testimonies are uh, uh, huge. Personally, uh, I have seen uh, you know, people were getting healed. I have taken the information from there. They have uh, cell groups. Through the cell group, uh, they they touched many people. Uh, uh, in Bangalore, people, they know the life service, baptism services and all. In a one baptism service, they used to give more 300 plus, 400, 500 like that. Uh, maybe everybody is not... Uh, attending regularly and a part of the church because uh, I have seen many traditional people just they go take baptism and come. But uh, there are people though uh, sincerely they are attending the church and taking part in all the works of the church and sincerely growing in the Lord. I can see that. And Pastor Samitangaya working among the young people. They have new generation church. 
I have seen so many testimonies. The young people set free from the drug addictions and sinful lives, pubs and bars. They come out of that and accepted Christ. And uh, they they are uh, they were witnessing God's power in the church. And under the Paul's uh, Tangaya's leadership, uh, more than four hundred in their website and in the social media have collected this information because this assembly of God's. Uh, institution. So, under his leadership, they contributed more than uh, 400 churches. Personally, he went and uh, uh, dedicated these churches. So, in Karnataka, like uh, Tumkur, Chikamangalur, Bidar, Gulbarga, and parts of North Karnataka. So, these works are remarkable. So, there are churches like this, many churches, Shekina, 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 the prior, House of Prayer, and um, even APC doing the remarkable work in the city. And like this, many churches are there in Bangalore, but I've taken only uh, two examples. And uh, we can see the Shalom Eji Church in uh, Chitra Durga. Uh, they were the uh, people. Sorry, sorry to interrupt, uh, Thomas. I think that's uh, like times up. Maybe you can take a minute to close. Um, yes, Pastor. Yeah, yeah. Uh, two minutes, I'll close it, Pastor. Yeah. So, uh, Chitra Durga, <clears throat> Pastor Alexander, I didn't mention his name. He's a pioneer. He just came to came for a business to Chitra Durga to tire business and all. So, when he came there as they're doing the business, he saw the need of the people. So, uh, sharing the gospel to the neighboring house, like that, the sharing the deliverance and healings were taking place. So, people are start coming there. So, after that, they went to the yeah, assemblies of God things and all they started the church and they used to go to the villages and preaching the gospel healings and deliverance are so powerful in the churches also many servants of God and the leaders were raised and sent to that uh, near to the parts of the Chitra Durga villages Kodulkere and things and all and God doing a remarkable thing so finally I close with God's glory under persecution there are 39 attacks in 3 months in 2021 and uh, across India, uh, Karnataka is the third most persecuted state in India. There are 109 church attacks in Karnataka in 2021. And this uh, shows the the Christianity growth. Where we can see in the government calculation, the percentages are very less. But actually something happening in the spiritual realm. That's why I feel that the attacks are very, uh, very high. In uh, Yadagiri district, MLA raised a complaint saying he, his mother is con forcibly converted to Christianity. So when they went and inquired the media to the MLA's mother, but that mother boldly confessed, no, nobody's forced. I only personally accepted Christ. Uh, I will not change. That bold statement shook the whole state. And government uh, made a team to survey how many forced conversations, conversions, and they tried to bring the anti-conversion law. But actually, when they surveyed, no single complaint saying that there is a forcible conversion. So the anti-conversion law, they, they couldn't bring it. The thing is, the God's power and the glory and the gospel is moving powerfully. It may not seem uh, visible in our eyes, but it's happening in each and every district and every villages. Uh, that, that's why the attacks are more. And through this attack, the God's name is glorifying. And so many testimonies uh, I have seen um, in Mangalore and Udupi. So many people uh, falsely accused, they falsely converted. But the church people and the church members, they they only boldly come and, and they share the testimony. Nobody forced. And we only personally accepted Christ like that. Thank you so much. Right. Uh, thank, thank you, Thomas. So just a few questions. Now, um, since the topic was about revival, and uh, were you able to find any, um, you know, incidents or the pastors, some of the senior pastors, uh, or, or some of the pastors who've been there, you know, for quite some time in the state, um, were they able to share anything about specific, uh, you know, outpourings of the Holy Spirit? Um, in the state, like probably, you know, probably it was in one church or you know, uh, over a particular region, uh, were, they, were they able to share anything like that? You know, something like what we hear about in Shillong or, you know, uh, about, um, you know, 
pandit drama by the mukti mission and all that you know something like that uh, where you able to get any information actually we in a, i didn't get like that information where it happened in shillong or uh, some parts as the outpouring of the holy spirit is very high but um, the healings and deliverance were powerful when they are beginning the ministry but uh, i didn't get that uh, kind of information where the outpouring of the holy spirit is very high mm. okay okay so um so where individual pastors you know at least able to testify saying that in their ministry and you know they they experienced a season of an you know, outpouring uh, or they heard of something uh, so i saying that they didn't really share anything like that uh, um actually when uh, uh, pastor ashwant kumar i didn't mention in the ppt when 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 they, his ministry when they started with a few people in, under the sheet roof when the church is growing in a particular time the holy spirit move was very powerful people were responding people were falling on the floors people were uh, screaming out the demons are coming uh, come out of them and the mighty move in in particular season after that the church growth is shifted more than now they have more than 5000 attending uh, members of the church in that particular season uh, i think um, I, i remember in 90s or somewhere he told that year in that year there is a move of for uh, one or two months that happened like that he shared and my personal experience when i was in chitradurga Uh, we were have three days meeting that uh, uh, i couldn't uh, come out of that incident that's a remarkable incident where uh, the we took the hall for a meeting that next to the lingayats hostel there is a hindu caste based hostel uh, there are more than uh, 60 to 80 kids are there i asked my uh, one of my friend who's uh, living there i asked is it possible to go share the love of god to those children he said that's not possible they will kill you they are so adamant to the caste system and all so i was praying the last day of the meeting i can see this kids just ran into the hall so we were wondering where this kids came and after that meeting we just uh, sharing uh, share, praying to the people in my personal experience that's uh, that's unforgettable i just hold one girl hand and i said jesus she just fell on the floor that first girl when i fell on the floor i was really afraid and uh, asked someone's person to get the wa- uh, water mm-hmm. so they went to take the water immediately that girl stood up i didn't understood the next girl i just touched i said jesus she also fell like that 20 to 30 girls falling like that the children the boys and girls and when they stood up they were they they cutting their all the tallis matches and the ties in their neck and whatever they're hanging and they say we came to hostel because my father is a drunkard drunkard we have uh, financial things and all they have telling their own stories and telling now onwards we believe jesus and we pray to jesus no matter where we are but we believe this god will make something good for us so we we pray to jesus that remarkable thing happened uh, through i have seen personally in ministry but uh, only few incidents i heard from the pastors not much the outpouring of stories like their past okay okay and um, yeah just a um, couple of couple of other questions like uh, like in the uh, coastal karnataka you know that udupi mangalore that belt and uh, so any anything in particular about the churches there and uh, uh, you know the kind of uh, uh, evangelism the work that they are doing and uh, you know what they are experiencing um in terms of revival uh, uh pastor personally i didn't uh, con- uh, contact uh, unable to contact any pastors because uh, i didn't get the information on website as well mm-hmm. even i know a person who uh, uh, he is a senior in my hostel but i didn't i'm unable to get his number as well uh, some uh, local mission works are happening in uh, udupi and mangalore the recent incident uh, shook uh, one of the incident is a girl called ratna i, I guess in uh, last 3 months back there is a issue the forcible conversion like that but that girl testimony on youtube the shook whole karnataka she said nobody forced me i personally accepted the christ like that uh, she said and but i couldn't personally get any information through that because i didn't have much contacts there 
okay. and more uh, not much um, information are not available in websites like the, in bangalore right right okay uh, last question is uh, you know like when we read about these revivals uh, like even in punjab and shillong and other places like we see that there was a strong prayer movement and people praying for years you know uh, even for uh, i mean decades um uh, praying for and expecting a, a move of god uh, so that more and more people could be saved and brought into the kingdom so so in your research uh, did you find a similar kind of uh, expectation among the pastors among the churches um you know a, a prayer move for revival is it there or is it not there yeah. yes pastor is 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 there uh, in bangalore city we we know uh, fgh church praying for more than 1000 days for the revival and expectation mm-hmm. and of course the bethel age uh, in, in we only people know the services but the, the malayalam congregation they pray every day for the revival and expecting the revival not only that the small congregations where we call in electronicity there is a church called hope in jesus they have the revival prayer every evening they have a live service uh, he is my uh, mentor in a uh, few, few years back is pastor anish and in the, in their church also every day they pray for the revival and they stay also ministered in one church they have the 21 for days fasting prayer they also pray for the revival continuously and expected for the revival like that uh, many churches are praying and expecting the uh, outpouring of the holy spirit in the city right right okay thomas thank you thanks for the presentation uh, so thanks everyone i thank think um, yeah uh, i think uh, the only person uh was one more person left which is uh, siddharth okay so we have one more class and then hopefully we'll be able to finish then right thank you god bless we'll meet again thank you sir right bye bye